All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Michael Haggerty. I'm the CEO and Chief Internet Strategist for Trellon. And here today, I'm here to talk about Able Organizer. Able Organizer is a distribution of Drupal. Um, it's built to act as a community engagement platform. Now, before I get started, uh, just with a show of hands, how many of you folks work with nonprofits, either for or providing services for? Just about everybody? Okay. And um, now, what are you two doing here then? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Media. Okay. So, uh, not a lot of folks know what a community engagement platform is. Uh, when I go out to speak about this, people are wondering what the name means. One of the other big questions that people ask is, how does this stack up against some of the other distributions that are out there? Companion, um, Red Hen, uh, there's quite a few that are sort of floating around here today. I want to try and answer some of those questions by taking a look at Able Organizer and just sort of illustrating what it does by looking practically at the features that are there um, to give everybody a sense of, of, of what you can do with the platform. So uh, to start with, I'm going to just kind of introduce the system, um, talk about what it does. Um, I'm going to do some real practical demonstrations of the technology, showing you uh, how some of the various features work. Then we'll take a look at the CRM interface that exists within the system. I'll show you what some of the tools are that you can use to customize the reports, contact pages, and other things that, that exist there. And as we get towards the end, I think I want to speak a little bit in depth about the technology. Usually I treat these sessions like they're, they're kind of general, but here today, since this will be up on the web, um, I'm going to speak a little bit to some of the underlying technical architecture and, and maybe address some questions that some people might have who, who are not here today. So um, if that's all right, I think we'll get started. Feel free to stop me at any time if uh, there's a burning question, but if it's really technical and detailed, let's leave it towards the end. Is that okay? Let's get started. What Able Organizer does as a distribution um, is it gives you a tool that allows you to interact with your community. It has a built-in Drupal-based CRM system built on CRM core, which is part of how it works. Uh, when we look here at this screen, and by the way, we're looking at exactly what you get when you download the install profile from Drupal.org, um, is you're going to see we have these four features that are outlined. Fundraising, events, petition, and volunteer activity. These are the four features that ship with the platform, and it's, it's kind of a curious story about how we, we came up with these four as the big four that we wanted to push with the platform. Uh, Trellon's been around for 10 years. We've been working with political campaigns, nonprofits, NGOs, academic organizations, pretty much exclusively during that time. I've actually collected 3,600 RFPs. I don't throw away email. I keep them all in the same spot. And what I did, one very long weekend when I was very, very bored was I went through as many of them as I could and I started scoring them to say what the top features are that organizations need in order to work effectively with the web. And these were the top four uh, above content management, above other things. Does this speaker still work? Are these guys just sabotage? Is... Okay. No, that's okay. The record levels are way too high. Way too high? You're getting blown out. We're trying to adjust it. I apologize. Okay, now that's fine. I'll just keep talking, and hopefully, if, if anybody does have a problem, just yell at me. Um, fundraising event functionality and petition functionality were really the top four things that folks were looking for. At the same time, people were looking for something, in most cases, a little bit more sophisticated than what you might find with some of the commonly used solutions that are out there. And, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, when we take a look at an event, people want the ability to sell tickets at different levels. They want the ability to sign up multiple people at the same time. In a lot of cases, what organizations are searching for, based on you know the small sample that, that I took, um, is also the ability maybe to manage attendance and to understand the people who are actually showing up for events and then perhaps even to personalize content for them after they've been there. When people are, well, in, in many of the RFPs that, that you know, we surveyed, we looked at things like volunteer activities, where they want to allow people to sign up for volunteer activities, but they want to be able to set a number of slots 
for people that are able to sign up. And they wanted to be able to send separate sign up thank you messages and separate waiting list meeting messages after people come in. So with the Able Organizer's distribution, what we've tried to do is offer features plus something slightly nicer. Um, what you're going to find is for each one of these features, there's something just a little bit more interesting that it does than maybe what you could easily achieve using some of the default tools that exist in Drupal. Um, I'm going to take a step back, and we're going to take a look at what some of our online donation forms look like. I'm going to load um, this page. It's a real standard Able Organizer uh, donation form. And I'm going to fill out the form. Um, so it says, make a donation now. So my name is Michael Haggerty. My email address is this. Um, I shouldn't punch in my real home address, so I'll say Happy Lane. And I'll say I live in Honington. This is some guy I don't like. And if anybody wants to go buy his house, you feel free. For, And uh, then we have our fake credit card number that's automatically populated. The system's integrated with Drupal Commerce, so the same way that we process donate or transactions in other parts of our site, we're able to do that very easily using Able Organizer. When I hit Submit, I'm taken to a custom thank you page. I can set a default thank you page for all my donations, or I can set an individual thank you page for each uh, donation one, you know, one at a time. Um, when I submit that form, some important things happen. The first thing is, I'm just going to pop open some other tabs so I can step us through. My activity feed updates. I have a record of the fact that I just made this donation. I can see it. I can visualize it. I can interact with it. If I want to add links to somebody's Twitter feed so I can say thank you personally, it's very easy to do. This is built with panels. All of the widgets that you see in the pages can easily be taken out. You can add ones that are other wise, you know, a little bit more meaningful for what you're trying to do. Um, this is meant to be customized. When I go to my contacts page, I'm going to see there's now a record for Michael Haggerty. This record has existed for a little while. Uh, I'll come back and I'll create like a new contact at some point. But what you'll see is that we have a complete list of all the activity that this person has taken in my website. It's not just limited to donations. If I'm signing up for events and other things, that's going to appear as part of my contact record. And likewise, this page, the contact record that you see, is built using panels. It's made to be customized and uh, customized using drag and drop tools. And I'll just show that off real quick. I'm assuming you guys are all pretty sophisticated Drupal users who are very aware of all the options that are out there. But there might be some other people who are seeing this um, over the internet as a video. So I do want to make sure that we, we try to drive the home point home for those guys. But what you'll notice is that the user photo and the what I stand for block have both changed positions. When we look at contact information in Able Organizer, we want to look at it in the most meaningful, contextually relevant way possible for the organization that's out there. At Trellon, we just don't believe that one-size-fit-all solutions are really good for organizations in, in, a, in an era of big data, where folks collect a lot of information. And I'm, I'm sure you can find nice indicators for um, many of the organizations that are out there. But you know, if you're more focused on, on aggregate data or if you're more focused on really personal relationships, you should be able to easily adapt your site to, to reflect the nature of your outreach. Um, and that's what we seek to do with Able Organizer. There's about 160 widgets that ship with this that allow you to customize your interfaces. I'll go ahead and set that back because every time I do a demo, I need to pull that trick off in order to show people what's up. Finally, after we've looked at our dashboard, okay, which is very global data, we've looked at our contact reports, which uh, our contact records, which are very personal data. We also have our reports, which which kind of gives us aggregate data. Just like our contact records, oh, <laughs> I've only done one thing in the last 20, in the last 30 days. Just like our contact records, um, our reports are built with panels. They're constructed using lots of different CTools plugins, widgets, and, and other great things. And they're meant to be customized by, by the organizations that are out there. So when I hit edit panel, when I go here, 
and I adjust the URL so it doesn't automatically redirect me, I can go into this report and say, you know, that 30-day history chart, may maybe that's not enough for me because in the last, we don't get donations maybe that often, but in the last 30 days, uh, I've only had $25 in donations. Maybe I want to change the range on that. So I'll switch that range to 120 days back and hit finish. I set this instance up for a demo I did at the United Nations. So no, not there yet. Might have been slightly, maybe I missed the button. Okay, that's a better range for me. Um, with all the widgets that we've distributed, when it comes time to control uh, dates, when it comes time to control colors, uh, anything else about the appearance of reports, we try to, to empower you by giving you the tools that you need um, to make these look and act the way that you'd like. Well, it depends. If you're, um, so the question is like, who would be customizing this? Obviously, somebody with a slight level of technological sophistication would be. But with a lot of the campaigns that I've been on, they have zero money. They have no technical staff. It is people who need to go in and make modifications to what they're doing. They've got great worthwhile causes that are completely underfunded, and nobody around them understands the importance of it. Being able to have drag and drop tools with a web-based GUI, I think, is kind of important. And we've tried to simplify it to the level where you could build it yourself or your client, or your client could make some modifications themselves. There's no real reason to distinguish in terms of who the end user is. It's somebody who can operate a web browser that we're after. So I want to take a step back. And again, for the benefit of that silent audience who we can't see, who might be watching a video online. Sorry about my phone. I can't get the ringer to turn off all the time. Um, we're just going to sign up for something else. And on my contact screen, uh, we don't have anybody named, it would be a good name. Does anybody want to uh, recommend a good name for me? Tyler Durden. T-Y-L-E-R. Tyler Durden. <laughs> Isn't that the guy from that movie? No, that wasn't it. I, I think it said, I don't know, I'm not supposed to talk about it or something? But anyways, let me hit submit. So when I do, we're going to watch that activity record, uh, sorry, that activity feed update in real time. And we're going to see our contacts update in real time. Uh, Tyler, there's Tyler Durden, OK? Um, when we go into his contact record, there's the activity records that we have for him. You're noticing that this is getting built in real time, but let me just kind of show you something interesting about the way this works. If I was to go back and fill in an online donation form and fill it out as Tyler Durden, T-Y-L-E-R, D-U-R-D-E-N, T-D-U-R-D-E-N, at Trellum.com, and I'll put in an address, one, two, three, Arch Lane, and that's going to be in um, A V E R. And we're in Park, Maryland, 202034. Okay. You're going to notice that there is only one record for Tyler Durden. You're going to notice that his activity record has updated with the latest activity that this person has carried out in the site. And if we were to dive into our reports, so that was like 25 before. Now it's jumped to 50. Um, data is built, let's say data collection is structured in a way to provide us 360 degree views of contacts. So what I mean there is that when someone comes to your site, they don't need to create an account anytime somebody is submitting information into your system. What Able Organizer is going to attempt to do is identify existing contacts that, that, that are in your site. It also has a framework to help you to find contacts that might exist in other sites or databases. So if you had a separate online membership database 
And you needed to check via web services if somebody's record exists before you create a new record in your system. It's not very hard to do that. The way that we handle that is through a special tool um, called a matching engine. The matching engines that exist for Able Organizer are very sparse. Okay, by default, this is what you get out of the box. It's something called default matching engine. It's designed so it'll work on any Drupal website. And what you do is you configure on a per content, per contact type basis, what the rules are for identifying a, a potential match when they come to your site. It works off a threshold system. You assign a score for what a match needs to, to score in order to, to work with it. Um, and then for each field of information, you assign a, a score. Okay, so first name is worth 10 points, last name is worth 20 points, an email address is worth 30 points. And as soon as you get past 30 points in terms of points, that's how we identify that match. That's the glue that holds together those 360 degree views. This doesn't have to be the only set of logic that you apply in terms of matching. We've worked with organizations with very sophisticated matching needs. Um, and what we actually designed is a framework that allows you to create your own custom matching engines that can be applied based on any information that's coming in through the site. When we look at this screen, oops, I guess I gotta go one more back. You're gonna see that you know we have some, some drag and drop handles there. If you chose to create your own matching engine, you can control the order in which they process by using those drag and drop tools. Um, that's just one kind of clever bit to the system that helps us to, to kind of appreciate what it's really doing here. Um, so matching engines are key and it's part of, of, of how you, you work with it. But ultimately, Able Organizer is really there to help us to answer questions. Part of the reason that we've built out reports and that we've built out reports the way that we have is really to empower organizations to, to look at information in the way that, that's kind of most important to them. So I'm gonna talk about the features that are here and how we track information about people when it comes in. Obviously, you've seen contact records, and you know you can always look at somebody's contact record to understand what they've done. But when you want to understand what's going on in a community, you want to look at aggregate reports to kind of go through everything that's there. For donations and events and volunteer activity and petitions, what we've done is enabled source tracking. A source can be anything. It's just anywhere that activity comes from in relation to your site. So when you look at this donation sources report, what you're looking at is just a, a list of sources that have been configured here. Um, we find that fundraisers are really our top line um, source, of info, source of donations and donation activity in our site. When I ask for a summary report from the system, it gives me some valuable bits of information that I can use when I'm conducting campaigns it can help me to refine my approach for interacting with my community. Um, let's look at some of the things that, that it answers here. First off, in terms of the history for this source, okay, people have been giving money to this for a while, since early March. And as we follow the peaks and the valleys, okay, we can see very clearly when there have been spikes in activity and when there have been valleys, um, where not, not much has happened. So late March, early March, something nice happened for us. When we look down at a source frequency report, what we see is that people giving money to this source like to give once and only once. We're wasting our breath if we send out emails that ask people to give to our fundraiser if they've already given. That's kind of nice to know if you're gonna be constructing lists. When we look at our donation levels, um, we can see pretty clearly that people like to give between $100 and $250 when they're giving to our fundraiser. So on the one hand, if we're ever asking people to give to our fundraiser, we would tell them, you know, we would suggest to them, you know, between $100 and $250 is appropriate. Um, but more importantly, if we're asking them to give maybe to another source that we have, that might be an important piece of data to have, to know that they've already liked to give, you know, this amount. Finally, when we look at this pie chart over here, the other sources chart, um, this is pretty informative as well, okay? Our, our fundraiser is the source that we're looking at, but when we look at it in comparison to other sources that are there, 
we know that people who like to give to the fundraiser also like to give to all of the other sources that we have in our site, but especially online donation campaigns. When somebody gives to an online donation campaign, they give multiple times because that number is over 100%. We, we, we can tell in terms of frequency that people like to give to that a lot more than they like to give just to our fundraisers. So if I was going to construct another appeal okay, to people in my site or if I was going to personalize some content that recommends somebody makes a donation, and I know that that person has given to um, our fundraisers in the past, I might want to tell them to make a contribution of between $100 and $250 to an online donation campaign. That would be a really safe activity, and I could expect that a certain number of people would be converted. Um, the reason I went into sort of this level of detail about this report is that it illustrates the concept behind it. Um, at Trellon, we don't really believe in data-driven campaigns where data and metrics just tell you everything that you should ever need to do. Um, organizations who uh, engage in that um, often are successful, at least in the short term, but I often feel that they're also kind of short-sighted in that it cuts down on the creativity and just the natural resourcefulness of the people who run campaigns. Okay, often you have to understand something about your audience in order to find ways to interact with them. And if you're just looking at what worked last year, you might be setting yourself up for failure this year. A data-informed campaign is something that's a little bit different. What we want to do is give people tools that are easy to use and easy to manipulate that allow you to naturally adjust to whatever your data is telling you without necessarily having to go and like use a third-party system. A lot of groups use Drupal in conjunction with Salsa or with NGP Van or with um, Civi CRM or with something else. And in a lot of cases, they have to go to a third-party system. They have to update headers. They have to update templates. There's no opportunity to provide customized or personalized content when you're looking at the donation forms. Um, it doesn't give you many opportunities to tune what you're doing or to let your data inform how you present things. Let me show you what's different about Able Organizer. And um, maybe you guys can tell me if this seems simpler. When I go into an online donation camp page, okay, I could add whatever fields I want here, images, photos, videos, you name it. When I go in to edit the page, um, I have to give it a title and a body. Just like any other piece of content in my Drupal site, I can use this menu to select the actual form that will appear on that page, okay, which allows me to tailor my asks to exactly the information that I want at any time. And then I can select one of several preset messages. But out of the box, we only give you one, but you can create as many email messages as you need. So does this seem simple to anybody here? Okay, we're really trying to get this down to the level where if you are engaging in any kind of call to action that's out there, um, you can use the tools that Drupal gives you and have them empower you, you know, quite a bit, not stand there and try to figure out how to get it to integrate with a third-party system. That's always expensive. And, and it's not always fun, okay? So our reports plus these tools that are naturally easy to manage are really meant to be the way that we achieve a data-informed campaign. Um, you've got information in your site. It can naturally be used to drive personalized content to users. And you've got a way to collect all of that information in, in real time. So we want to pause there. Does anybody have any big questions about the content management tools or the reports that you've seen thus far? I'll get into some of the more complex points in just a moment, but I just wanted to see if, does that sit well? Um, so I guess what Janine was saying, uh, it looks like mostly you're talking about like the back-end reports that are for staff in the organization. Yep. Is, is this fun actually primarily a CRM department? I would say so. Yeah. So the question is, are there tools that give power to content creators? 
So when I think of a content creator, I'm thinking of someone who enters blog posts or creates news press releases or changes the front page of the site. Is, would that be accurate? Well, I think that you can change like how the vision looks, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I'm going to go to the add content page. Uh, we just use the exact same tools that you have for Drupal. You can configure this exactly the same way you would any other Drupal website. Um, we're not trying to solve the problem of like how would your site work. Um, in my mind, that's sort of putting people in a box. Um, feel free to configure your site whatever way you choose. Okay, and if you like to use Display Suite, use Display Suite for your petitions. Or if you like to write custom themes that are very specific to what you do, go ahead and do that. If you want to allow your users to create their own donation campaigns so that, or donation pages so that they, you can conduct peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns, feel free to enable them to do that. You know, we're, we're setting the forms and the thank you messages. Um, that can all be turned off through, through the admin interface. But there's nothing different about this than building a standard Drupal site. It's the distribution itself is giving you the capabilities to create those items. So does that help? Does that answer? Yeah, not at this phase. If you want to jump into the ABLE organizer forums and give us some feedback about how it should be used or how it should be work, um, how it should operate, um, that's great. You know, if we hear that there's a big demand to have blogging features turned on by default so that somebody could do that, then that's fine. We can add that to the platform or add it to the installer so that it could be worked with real easily. Right now, you know, at Trellon, we just kind of use this for our clients. We've got about 13 able organizer sites that are out there. It just works pretty well. Um, what I would like to do is form a community and make it less Trellon-centric and make it more open source, where just everybody can put their hands on it, modify it, work with it. It's available for download from Drupal.org right now. And I think what we'd like to do is get to the point where there's just features people can turn on um, to to add all of that functionality. But um, no, we're not trying to do more than that at this stage, um, in part because we just don't have a lot of data points. You know, when we're setting up a site for somebody, they're not looking to just come in off the street and turn it on. A lot of the tools that you just come in and turn it on are, are pretty constraining. It's what leads to some of the situations that are the problems that we try to solve with, with this system. So, you know, it's the tail of the dragon type, type issues. Is there another question? We have a microphone there, by the way. If you want to make sure that other people can hear your, um, your questions, feel free to jump up. We'll take them for another minute or two, and then I'll show you some other interesting things. I was just wondering this in compared with Civi CRM uh, product. So. Yeah. Trellon's been contributing to Civi CRM for uh, like six or seven years. And we really like Civi CRM. But there's things about it that are very hard to deal with. And I can tell you what some of the ones are that we hear about the most. Um, Civi CRM uses Smarty for programming. Now, a lot of people have a hard enough time learning Drupal in the first place. I know it's pretty easy for those smart people who are sitting here in the audience with me. But for other folks, they have to spend years developing theming skills, custom module development skills, and everything else. And then when you turn around and you tell them, hey, it's time to learn Smarty so that you can work with Civi, that makes life hard. So the second problem that kind of exists with Civi um, that is related to that is that once you have Civi CRM installed and you need to create something new that Civi doesn't do, it can be tough. Trellon has made a lot of money over the years just customizing Civi CRM displays to do very minor things. Um, I don't know how I, I really feel about that. Um, Smarty is not hard for me. It's something I can understand, but I am a weirdo. 
And um, I can also work with what exists in Drupal. I don't feel like it's reasonable for me to expect everybody to be able to do that. So um, Able Organizer is not necessarily a replacement for Civi CRM. We do some of the same things. What um, is different about Able Organizer is the fact that you can theme it using the same skills that you already have for working with the Drupal site. And you can manage content in it using the same tools that you use in your Drupal site. So your donation pages, your events, your petitions, and volunteer activities. Those are all real easy to create. Maybe more importantly, when it comes time to manage your contacts, oops, jump in here, you can manage them using very familiar interfaces that work identically to the way you manage content in your Drupal site. If I were to you know, go into an individual contact record, for instance, these are fields that are available by default. I don't have to use these fields, but I can. If uh, I need to add a new field, this, this shouldn't be too confusing to anybody. You should be able to start engaging in outreach right away. Um, so that's really the differences. If you're familiar with Drupal, you're familiar with CRM core, which is the underlying set of modules for managing contacts. Are there any other big questions on anybody's mind right now? What are um, convenient and helpful ways for other developers and, and teams to, to contribute, to get involved? Sure. So uh, the question is, how could I get involved? Um, there's lots of different ways. Um, uh, unfortunately, they're all non-traditional. Um, right now, uh, we have ableorganizer.org. It's just another copy of Able Organizer. Um, that's installed. If you have ideas for what would be great about the community, first off, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my name on Twitter is Um I answer lots of emails at heytrellon at trellon.com. Um, we'd love to just kind of identify the community of people who are interested in contributing and you know just find ways to build relationships with you. Um, but send ideas on you know maybe how we could use ableorganizer.org as a as a tool for. Um, contributing. The second thing is ableorganizer.org does include complete instructions for how to create features that tie into the platform. So if you're interested in creating features, the most popular thing we hear about these days is membership. Um, feel free to create one and post it on drupal.org. That's what we're using right now to host all of the features that exist. The donations, events, petition, and volunteer features, you can also just download separately as modules from Drupal.org in order to work with them. Third, just use the platform and blog about it. Um, I've got things set up on Google that watch for instances of the word able organizer. Um, I'd like to see some that actually deal with the product itself. Um, lots of people talk about other folks who were able organizers, and that's not the product. Um, it's, it's just a little different. Would anybody would like to know how the name came around, Able Organizer, by the way? Uh, it's a tribute to the Ramones. So they used to say, A, O, let's go. <laughs> so I wanted to find a way to get that to tie in, and, and that's where it came from. Um, one more question. Sure. Yes. That question comes up all the time. I had a really good conversation with somebody from Morehouse University who was saying, we have funds. We have the general fund. We have the athletic fund. We have the class of 1932 fund. How do we earmark something for a specific donation? I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to. It's not hard. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the Drupal Commerce integration because that, that's kind of big and kind of fun. Um, this field that you see right here is variable amount field. Um, you can set up forms, and I'm about to show you the form builder, um, so that it can collect things at a variable amount. Um, we'll take a look at a static amount form, which is dramatically different. It's the same thing, but without a text field. Um, we'll take a look at button amount form, 
Okay, these are all things you can configure through a web-based user interface without much effort. Um, this allows me to just change the amount that's going to be donated um, by, uh, by clicking a button, but also limiting people's options there. Let's take a look at some other interesting ways of, of doing things. Um, these can be applied to donations. These can be applied to um, events. These can be applied to anything where you need to process a transaction. Um, this is called ticketing, and ticketing means that we have different levels and we have a quantity for each level. So when I hit update, whoops, if I set a quantity and I hit update, okay, the total amount that somebody's going to be charged updates in real time. And, you know, we can use JavaScript to automate that. Um, I'll go back one more step and I'll show you one more kind of variant of a payment form. Oops, that's not it. 5K run and walk for charity is. Um, so this is levels without quantities. So by default, you can do all of that out of the box, and, and there's even a couple of other options that, that just aren't set up here. Um, now, the way that we would actually earmark a donation and specify that it's going to go into a certain fund is, is, is pretty easy. easy. I would go into the activity type for a donation, and I would go to the fields, and I would add a new field and just call it fund. And let's say it's text list, and I would hit save. Here's my lad values. Let's say general activities. What's one more? What's a fun one? The Dean's Dance Blue? Fair enough. What does it save? Um, I'll just hit save again. I don't think there's anything special that we need to do there. We now have the ability to track what each donation is earmarked for when it comes into my system. Now let me show you how we would add that to our donation forms themselves. I'll take a step back here. Um, I'm just going to go back to that first donation page that anybody looked at. We have a variable amount field, okay, where we can specify the amount that somebody is going to contribute to. But as you can see on this form, there's no way for us right now to collect anything about that fund. I want to change this form so that I can earmark where the funds are going to go. And let me do that. Under CRM Core, I'm going to go to CRM Core Profile. Um, the name for CRM Core Profile came out of the fact that we were trying to have something that could kind of replace Profile 2 in a Drupal site and feed your information to our CRM tools. Um, but it quickly grew into something that does something much different. Okay, This allows us to build forms using a drag and drop user interface. I know that the form I just changed is called Donation Form. If I ever need to verify it, I can hit edit, go down on my CRM coordination page, and I can look at the physical name. It's not too hard. Um, when I go into donation form, I've got you know a number of options here, but I'm going to hit the edit option. Edit allows you to change what information is collected. Settings allows you to change how the form behaves. And in this case, I can see on my form I'm collecting contact information, and I'm collecting activity information. For my contact, I'm creating an individual contact type. We support individuals, organizations, and households by default. On my activity screen, um, I know that I'm creating a new donation. And here's my field for fund. When I check this box, that field is created down near the bottom of my set of fields that are going into my form. I know the set of fields can get very, very long. Whoops. So I'll just drag it up to the top so I know where it is. And I'm going to put it right under my amount field. The way that our forms are constructed is kind of like a silo. It just stacks one field right on top of the other, um, just like just about everything else in Drupal does. When I check this box, that's going to make that form field visible within my uh, my field 
or sorry, within my form. For right now, I'm just going to hit save so that we can see how that works. Profile forms always take a little bit of extra time to save because Drupal has to generate the form, it has to cache the form, it has to generate the menu entries, it has to refresh the cache, and do a bunch of other things. Um, but once it does refresh, and I hit refresh on this page, there's my fund field. So people could specify where something needs to go. Now, um, that's, that's interesting, okay, but let's just say I want to automatically capture the fund um, when people fill out a specific form. Like maybe I want to have three pages in my site, one's for general, one's for athletics, and one's for the dean's blue. Um, let me go back here. What I'm going to do is clone this form. And this is all fine. I've got the same settings that, that are there, the same fields. Um, Instead of calling it a copy of donation form, we're going to call it the athletics form, A-T-H-L-E-T-I-C-S form. Did I spell it right? I think I did. Um, I'm going to hit create and configure, and this takes me over to my settings page. And on my settings page, I can do some interesting things. I can select whether or not I want to make this form into just like a full page form that anybody could access at a certain URL. Um, I can also decide whether or not I want to keep it as a block. I can specify whether or not um, this is going to have a redirect path. Okay, And if it does have a redirect path, that's the page someone is taken to after they fill out the form. I can specify a message that's going to appear to users after they fill out the form. So I can say, in this case, thank you for contributing to the ATHLETIC fund. Um, our student athletes Appreciate it. My spelling is horrendous. I did mess it up. So we can set permissions for the form. If I want to control what roles of users could ever see the form and turn it off for certain user types, I can do that. Permission level access is a little bit more complicated, and I'd have to sit down and talk with you about that. It's too much for this session. But um, this will allow us to kind of control when it can be seen. I can apply those matching engines to submissions coming in through this form. I can also choose not to apply matching engines. So if I just want all of the data to go into the database and I don't care about matches, I can handle that as well. There's certain times we want to do that. I can pre-populate form values for logged in users and carry out all of these other options. I actually run out of breath just talking about the options sometimes. But let me scroll down since I already know the form works. I'm going to go back to my online donation page and I'm going to hit edit. And I'm going to need to hit refresh in just a moment after that's saved so that I can specify the, the form I was working with. I'll go down to donation form. I'll change that from donation form to athletics form. And I'm going to hit save. And right now, that's going to look like the exact same form that we had. People still have the option to choose their fund. But if I was to go back here and click edit, I can go down to the fund, I can uncheck it, and I can set a default value for it. I'll hit save, and we'll wait that long 30 to 45 seconds that we have to tolerate in order for this to work. And I'll hit refresh. From now on, every time somebody makes this donation, D-U-R-D-E-N, T-D-U-R-D-E-N at Cholon. Uh, I don't remember what we did. I hit submit. I'll go back to my dashboard. I'll hit view. And we'll see that our fund is reflected there. So a fund, in a sense, is just another source. Or maybe destination is a fair way of putting it. But it's real easy using the tools that Drupal gives you to track how this information is going to appear in the system. Make sense to anybody? <laughs> no fun. Okay. 
right here we're looking at the donation, okay? Because of how I accessed that one, well, I guess we're looking at the donor. This is part of the donor's activity record. So if I click on activities, I'll get a complete list of everything that Tyler, Tyler Durden, I might have misspelled his name, has ever done. And um, that's just one of the, the things he's done. I think if we wanted to modify this, guess what? It's a view. We can list whatever fun, whatever fields of information we need. It's not hard to modify, and most people should be able to do it. Um, I don't think it's a high bar to cross to train somebody to go into views and out of field. It's a high bar to cross to get it to work. But anyways, <laughs> any other questions? So the question is how you would connect actions to an AMS system. Do you want to get up to the microphone? Like email, management. email management, right. Yeah, sure. So how do we send messages out of Able Organizer is really the question. How do we send email messages? Right. Able Organizer does anything Drupal can do. It just happens to do them with contacts. The way that we support email messages is pretty simple to understand. We use rules. Um, we use rules and we integrate with third party systems. Right now we do integrate with MailChimp and Constant Contact. Uh, we've been looking at various other ones, but the way list support happens, um, we have a module that creates lists that are stored as relations. And um, that is capable of interacting with just about anything with an API. So if we need to integrate with something new, we can find a way very easily. But let me tell you how our rules work. Um, am I looking at the right thing? I'm not the rules guy at Trillon. I get confused easily. Donation thank you message is a rule that we would use for triggering an email. When I hit edit, what you're going to see is that we've got this set send e HTML email thing there. What you're also going to see is that we've tagged our rules. When you saw that list of emails that came down when I was editing the donation page, if I have a rule that is tagged CRM core donation thank you message, when a donation's been accepted in our system, that will be triggered so that it can send information out. Um, in terms of, of how this actually works, We have full token support, which makes it easy to specify where something's going based on the contents of a form. Um, we have these body fields that are a little hard to get at, but once you get there, there's all the information that you need. So this is how we would generate a one-off email, is using rules. You can clone the rules that exist if you want multiple options. As long as you can get to this text field to fill it out, you can customize exactly what's said in, in there. Um, so would this be sent, for example, by MailChimp, or would it be sent by the server that the Able Organizer is installed on? This would be sent by the server where Able Organizer is installed. If you want to send bulk email to your contacts, you can manage those lists with Able Organizer, and you can use a third-party system to actually do the mailings. The two that we support right now are MailChimp and Constant Contact. We will be supporting more mailers whenever we get around to it or somebody pays us. We contribute whatever we get paid to build. What is that going to do? For contribution? No, no, for, uh, for, for email systems, nothing. Nobody has any interest in doing anything according to all of the data that I have collected. Um, so if there is something that somebody else wants supported, you should probably let me know. I guess I'm the project leader on this one. Um, if somebody else wanted to build that, presumably that would also be encouraged. It would be encouraged and welcome. And when I see you at DrupalCon, I will buy you a beer, and we will have all kinds of fun. 
and talk about the great things we've done in the world, and then you can be open source too. Um, let me give one kind of last word about the technology and maybe where there's opportunities to contribute. Um, I want to talk about the core modules that make Able Organizer work. Okay, this is CRM Core. It's an open source project on Drupal.org. It's a set of modules. And CRM Core is really simple. The only thing it does is manage contacts, relationships, and activities. Nothing else. Um, and it's meant to be really simple. It's meant to be kind of like the plumbing within your website that allows you to do contact management. Um, 654 other websites use this currently. That seems like a small number, maybe compared to views or some of the other things, but when you stop to think about it, the number of organizations who are using CRM Core as a tool for managing their contacts, considering how vital CRM is to the health of organizations, that's actually kind of a big number. Um, I remember with Civi CRM when we were trying to figure out how many people were actually using Civi CRM um, way back in the day, and you know we couldn't get an answer to that, but I. I don't know how many it would have been. You know, 654 just seems to me for like a fledgling open source project like a huge number. Um, we are at version 0 0.96. I am getting ready to release version 1, which is coming here soon. And what version 1 will do, okay, and, and what you'll be able to do with Able Organizer around it um, is, is, is two additional things. Number one, you'll be able to import data into your system. If you have a spreadsheet that has contact information and activity information and some nodes and some user information all in one row, you'll be able to use our tool, which is built on top of the Migrate module, to import all of that in one batch, which is kind of interesting. The second thing it will do is feature enhanced list support. So if you remember when I said um, every feature that we deliver for Able Organizer is like a feature plus. You know, it's meant to be slightly nicer than what you would get out of the box with other things. Our list support is designed to allow you to keep arbitrary lists of anything in the system. It's also allowed, it's, sorry, it's also set up to allow you to track the intersection between two lists. So if I have list A and list B, and for that matter, list C, and I want to figure out what contacts are on all of those lists, that's pretty easy. Or if I want to find out who's on none of those lists, that's pretty easy as well. It's also built so that it handles your synchronization with third-party systems. Right now we use Taxonomy if we want to create lists. And Taxonomy is a beautiful system. I love it. Um, but it's actually not ideal for the um, challenge of just managing arbitrary lists of contacts. Once you create a list, everybody can see that list. There's no way to shut off access to that list. You can never have your own personal private list, nor can you control who the people are who can see that list. For that matter, you don't really control that list. The system controls that list, and everybody else can screw with that list. Um, that's, that's not a great way to do that. Um, so relation list is the name of the module we're building on Drupal.org that is going to control lists as we go forward. Um, it uses the relations module, and it's meant to be just a you know a slightly nicer way, okay, of, of handling things. Um, gives you list privacy. Gives you a really simple API if you need to push out lists of contacts to third-party systems um, that that need the stuff for integration. So that's my presentation. I'll be straggling around here for a few minutes if anybody wants to ask questions. I'm also available at the Trellon booth today and tomorrow, and I'm happy to talk about Able Organizer and give you one-on-one. -on -one, um, uh, previews of it, if um, you know that 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 would help. Just please remember that Able Organizer is available for download from Drupal.org at Drupal.org/project/ableorganizer. And like we said, if you want to contribute, yeah, we've not set up really good channels for contributing. But if you want to get in touch with me directly, send you know hate mail or love letters to um, heytrellon at trellon.com. So thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate all your time.